I got to give it to both of y'all. So thank you both for, for blessing us with your uh, musical abilities. Um, so uh, earlier this week, um, when I was sent the bio for the guest speaker, I saw her name was Nyla Curry, and I had to do a double take. That's actually the name of my best friend's daughter. Um, and it, it was, it's not a common name. So I was like, okay, you know, this is about to be good, you know. So I was really looking forward to it. Um, and then I actually read her biography, and I said, this is going to be real good. Um, so let me let me tell you a little bit about Miss Nyla Curry. Um, she is a 2019 graduate of Wesley Theological Seminary with a Master's of Divinity and Master's of Theological Studies. Her focuses are African-American church studies and womanist theological ethics. She is currently discerning PhD studies in Christian ethics with an emphasis in holistic health. Um, Nyla is also a veteran uh, with 10 years of Air Force experience. She is a Miami native who enjoys traveling, community storytelling, and creative writing. Um, she is also the founder of Tribe Purple LLC, a womanist initiative for healing and transformation. Uh, so after this next musical selection, uh, the next voice you will hear will be that of Miss Nyla Curry. Amen. Amen. Uh -oh. Let me take this no. Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious harness, some by swinging songs above. Praise his name, I'm fixed upon his name of God, redeemed in love. Hitherto thy love has blessed me. Thou hast brought me to this place, and I know thy hand will bring me safely home by thy good grace. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, brought me with his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Bless thy goodness like a feather, find me wandering hard to be. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel this. Prone to leave the God I love. Is my heart so take and feel it? Feel it for my course above. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Is my heart so take and feel it, feel it for thy course above, feel it for thy course above. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Hughes family. How y'all doing out there? I know I, you can't really talk back like you want to, but I'm so excited to be in fellowship with you today. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Kevin, for all of those beautiful musical selections. Um, as stated earlier, my name is Nyla Curry. It is so good to be here with you all today. Um, I'm a proud 2019 graduate of Wesley Theological Seminary, and I'm currently serving at Emory Fellowship in DC. I would like to send out a special thanks over the, over the virtual airways to Pastor Johnson for inviting me to preach on a very special day, a day that is dear to my heart, Grandparents Sunday. 
how many grandparents do we have? If you could just send a, a love offering, a wave, a wave your hands. Let me see who's on here. Oh, hello, grandparents. Miss Jacqueline, Miss Kathleen, I see you on here. Y'all look wonderful today. Thank you. And um, I just wanted to say to all of you, thank you for your love and care. Um, if it had not been for the grandparents, come on somebody, where would we be? Thank you, Jason, for reading the scripture so eloquently. I just want to read it as uh, my granddad used to say, one more again for the people in the back. First Corinthians chapter 13, verses eight through 13. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. It reads, love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we only prophesy in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For we now only see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I, only, now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Hughes Memorial, let's have a chat from the subject, lessons from Big Mama's Kitchen. Lessons from Big Mama's Kitchen dealing with the puzzles and perplexities of life that's the that's the taglines dealing with puzzles and perplexities of life when i was a little girl my parents would drive me and my brother up to georgia to see grandma every summer big mama lived in a small backwoods town called enigma georgia it was indeed an enigma you see Though the town is only four miles long with 1,500 people, you could easily get lost in its thick woods and secret passageways. Big Mama's house was a humble sight. It had seen just as much as her eyes had seen. Good days, bad days, times that were puzzling and times filled with perplexities and sweet secrets that hid themselves in things like her, like her sweet potato pie, Lord have mercy. And I will never forget all the lessons I learned from Big Mama's kitchen. The lessons I learned about God when she would turn a pot of nothing into something. Come on, somebody knows about that. Just a pinch of flour and a few eggs and this would yield enough pancakes for the entire neighborhood. Big Mama's kitchen was a sacred space of lessons from broken hearts and community crises and family celebrations, lessons learned from touching hot stoves. Have you ever touched a hot stove? Lessons on life, death, womanhood, and human resilience. But in the short time that is ours, I want to tell you about, I want to tell you about one major lesson uh, I received uh, one lesson of wisdom on dealing with the puzzles and perplexities of life. One summer visit, my mom and I were sitting at the old table in Big Mama's kitchen with a puzzle box. My mom was so excited, y'all. She was so excited to put this puzzle together, but excitement quickly turned to frustration shortly afterwards. She was perplexed and frustrated on how to put this 1,000 piece puzzle together. Have you ever put a puzzle together? 
She complained that the pieces were the size of her thumbnail and she was shocked at how almost all the pieces had the same colors that made it harder for her to sort them out. Have you ever dealt with a puzzle like this before? She was baffled that after two hours, she had only connected seven, somebody say seven, seven pieces of her 1,000 piece puzzle. Y'all, this puzzle was so complex that my very conservative and modest mother was two seconds away from a few choice words in Big Mama's kitchen. Lord, have mercy. Big Mama gave my mom the side eye. You know the side eye elders give you when you either did something ridiculous or you're, you're fretting over something ridiculous. And y'all, Big Mama began to sing a song. You may know it. By and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered home. We will tell the story how we've overcome and we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, the pieces that we are. Oh, the pieces that our lives are, complicated and coming together slowly but surely by and by. Deep down inside, I couldn't help but be tickled at this situation. It was a rare sight seeing my mom guided or chastised by a grandparent and through song at that. But I was also mesmerized at how relevant this situation and grandma's song was for our lives and the purposes in the, and our purpose in this world. As Psalm 145, 4 emphasizes, I had to praise God for this lesson grandma just taught me. You see, Hughes Memorial, many of us may not have worked on a 1,000 piece puzzle before, but I would imagine that many of us can relate to my mother's frustrations of having a big picture in our, or a vision about something in our lives and minds but not quite knowing how to bring all the pieces together. You feel led by God to write a book, but don't know how all 1,000 of your ideas are going to connect. You see a big picture of divine justice being served throughout the land, but justice has yet to roll like a river for Breonna Taylor and hundreds of thousands of others. Maybe the puzzle on the table of your life is a picture of a family, but it doesn't look like there's a partner or kids among your scattered pieces. Perhaps you have some puzzle pieces that don't seem to fit anywhere. The starting of that business or that epic road trip they, that you have no money for. And for many of us, we spend countless hours and energy on connecting the pieces of our lives and ourselves with uncertainty, and only partial understanding. Come on, somebody. We see the puzzle of family members and colleagues and friends coming together and wonder why, after all the work we put in, it seems as if we only have seven of 1,000 pieces connected. As Big Mama sang in the kitchen that day, to soothe my mother's frustrations, by and by, when the morning comes, we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, the pieces that we are and our lives are complicated and coming together by and by. And just like us, this is the state in which Paul finds the church of Corinth in, dealing with the puzzles and perplexities of life. Though this letter is entitled 1 Corinthians, it's actually the second letter that Paul writes to these enthusiastic, divisive, passionate, previously enslaved, perplexed, and puzzled baby Christians. The church of Corinth is trying to form their religious beliefs. They're trying to make sense of their current trials and tribulations. They're trying to connect the pieces of their lives as Christians and their roles as citizens in a Greco-Roman society. They're trying to connect the pieces of unity together, 
while falling into sexual scandals, creating factions and cliques. And in the historical backdrop of our text today, they have nu a numerous quarrels amongst themselves, bickering over what they should eat and not eat as Christians, judging one another and even suing one another. Does anyone know any Christian like this? I know you've all in the chat line had to deal with Christians like this. Let me say this another way. Being a member in the church of Corinth, Corinth was like being at a family cookout. Come on, somebody. And you're trying to play your part in keeping the family connected in unity, connected in the peace of Christ. You just told granddad that you would keep the peace today at this family cookout. But that aunt or cousin who is always starting something just walked in the door with the red solo cup. Lord have mercy. Amen, Miss Valerie. Not the family. Yes, ma'am. The family cookout. At the family cookout. Like my mom, the church of Corinth must have been two seconds away from a few choice words, trying to figure out how to connect the good news to their interactions and reactions. And in the midst of all of this, just as my grandmother was teaching us a lesson by singing the by and by, Paul is trying to teach them how to deal with the puzzles and the perplexities of our individual and communal life. Is anybody in 2020 perplexed today? Is anybody in the midst of multiple pandemics, racial and biologically puzzled? Are you puzzled today? First Corinthians 13 was not intended to be a lovey-dovey text to be recited on wedding days. In this chapter, Paul is laying down a blueprint, somebody say blueprint, of how this community with limited spiritual eyesight and limited understanding of their circumstances could start to connect the pieces of their personal and communal lives. In verses nine and 10, Paul emphasizes that we only know in part, we prophesy in part, we only see the situation in part. How many of you are dealing with situations right now that you don't quite understand how it started and where it will end? In verse 12, Paul says, we see in a mirror dimly, somebody say dimly, but we shall see one day and understand completely. Let me remix that Hughes Memorial. We don't know what tomorrow holds, and many of us on the line today are struggling to understand why we are in some of the situations we are in. Someone on the line is going through a horrible breakup or divorce. You were working diligently on the pieces of a relationship just to find out that the one that you were supposed to spend the rest of your life with is not even a part of your life's puzzle. Lord, have mercy. Others of us are frustrated. We're going through the perplexing times. Um, we're frustrated because we haven't seen the visions of our hearts come together. But I believe in a God who desires, who desires to bring us to maturity with mature eyesight and understanding of life's puzzles and a God who can help us connect the pieces until the puzzle of our lives are complete. In the mundane tasks and even in our limited movement in a pandemic, it may not seem like we're working on our puzzles at all. For those of us who are currently grieving the loss of a loved one, or maybe you are battling anxiety and depression, it may not seem like your puzzles are coming together at all. But in the midst of limited spiritual eyesight and limited understanding, the text suggests that God and God's mighty love, according to verses 8 and 13, will make all things complete. Finally, verse 13 provides us with a strategy for dealing with the perplexities and puzzles of life. And I don't usually read from the message translation, but it seems very helpful for today's text. It says, but for right now, until that completeness, 
we have three things. Somebody say three things to do to lead us toward that consummation. Amen. Amen, Adrian. Three things. And the best of the three is, oh, okay. We have three things. First, we have to trust. Trust steadily in God. Then we have to hope. Hope unswervingly. And then lastly, love extravagantly. And the best of these three is love. And so Hughes family, whether you are perplexed or confused about how a dream will come to pass or puzzled about how life will look like post pandemic, first trust, somebody say trust, to have faith that God is helping you bring all the pieces together. And that all the pieces are, in fact, there. You know how we get a puzzle box and sometimes you get one and the piece, one of the pieces is missing and it, it ruins the whole picture? Well, we're trusting and we're hoping and having faith that the, all the pieces are, in fact, there to make a complete picture. And then secondly, hope. Somebody say hope. Because hope is essential in times like these when we can't quite see how things will come together. Hope says, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Hope says, though the vision may tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. And as Jason pointed out, um, the world is on fire with all kinds of isms. But through it all, God and all of the universe is working with you and us to bring all of the puzzles of life into completion. And finally, love. Somebody say love. Now I'm sure, I'm sure some of you are wondering whether my mother finished that puzzle. Well, after realizing how frazzled she was, my mother brought the puzzle box in closer to her, to her sight, so that she could get a better look at the big picture. And though I'm sure at this point, the puzzle was more of a pain than it was therapeutic, my mother stuck to it, working on the puzzle for hours, days. She had faith and hope. She had faith and hope, y'all, that all the pieces were indeed there and that it would come together sooner than later. But the greatest help that she had with getting th through this puzzle was glancing every so often at the puzzle box until two long weeks later, the picture was complete. Hughes family, when we look at the individual and communal puzzles that we face, I can tell you that the greatest guidance we have for solving or completing anything is love. Agape love is the big picture and a guide for whatever we're going through. Love is what keeps us from losing our minds up in here, up in here. Love is a staff in a weary land filled with the wilderness. Love is what keeps our spirits from breaking as we work and wait for the great by and by. Hughes Memorial, there are many perplexing things that are going on in our lives, in the nation, and in the world. We may be perplexed by how we'll ever be able to undo all the political craziness and division that has been created in our country. It may be hard to rearrange and connect everything back together, but love is the big picture. Though we only see dimly, and though imagining a new normal after the pandemic may be hard, some of us are currently trying to connect and make sense of our unique set of gifts and dreams and calls. And I want to remind us that while we're striving to connect the dots, that love is the big picture. It's the ultimate destination. Hughes Memorial has been making good trouble, come on somebody, and making disciples yes. for over 70 years. And though you don't know yet, you don't yet know, how to connect the dots to get to another 70 years. As long as you keep agape love as your focal point, mm -hmm. God will reveal all the puzzle pieces and their positions in due time. As grandma said, 
in the great by and by. And though there will be some frustrations, yes, we may find ourselves crying and laughing and in wrestling matches like the church of Corinth. Love will always guide us into completion. As Big Mama sang in the kitchen that day to soothe my mother's frustrations, by and by, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of Hughes Memorial are gathered home. We will tell the story of how we've overcome and will understand it better. And you will understand it better, sister. And you will know it better, brother, by and by. Oh, the pieces that we are, y'all. Oh, the pieces that our lives are. Complicated, but coming together by faith, hope, and most importantly, love. Until that sweet by and by. Amen. Love you, Hughes. By and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathering home, we'll tell the story of how we overcome. And we'll understand it better by and by. Trials talk on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land. But he'll guide us with his eye, and we'll follow till we die. We will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, but when all the saints of God are gathering home, but we'll tell the story of how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Oft our cherished plans have failed, disappointment has prevailed, and we wandered in the darkness, heavy hearted and alone. But when trusting in the Lord and according to his word, we will understand it better by and by. Hey, by and by, when the morning Come. But when all the saints of God are gathering home, we will tell the story of how we both have come, and we'll understand it better by and by. As if by and by, when the morning comes, but when all the saints of God are gathering home, we will tell the story of how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Let the church say amen. Come amen. on, let the church say amen again. Amen. Oh, God, we thank God for that preached word. We thank God for the preacher of today. I had heard that Nyla was a good preacher, but the half had not been told. Oh, we just thank God for how she showed up and showed out on today. We also thank you for our uh, our musicians who were able to step in right on cue with the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 What a beautiful Grandparents Day and what a beautiful vision from this Grandparents Planning Committee. At, at this time, we're going to continue in worship with the giving of our tithes and our offerings um, as I as we go to our tithes and offerings, I had invited earlier for all our guests to 
uh, um, we want to recognize you before the service is over. So if you could just um, put your name and uh, in the chat box um, that we might know that you're present with us. We're just so happy uh, for all the guests who were able to join us on today. There are several ways that, in which you can um, worship with us today through the giving of your tithes and offerings and special offerings. Uh, the easiest way and, and my favorite way to give is through uh, Cash App. Uh, our Cash App handle is dollar sign Hughes Memorial uh, UMC. Uh, you may also go to uh, PayPal um, on our wait on our website and, and give at HughesMemorial.org. Um, uh, our website is HughesMemorial.org, and you can give uh, through PayPal there, or you can always bring or, or mail in your offerings, or have your bank send send in your offerings uh, at Hughes Memorial UMC, 2553rd Street, Northeast Washington, D.C. 20019. Uh, won't you please join me in prayer? Oh, good, gracious, and eternal God, Lord, we just thank you for the way you have just poured into us during this special worship experience. We, we feel your presence. We feel your love. We, we feel hope for uh, not only this day, but the days to come. We thank you, oh God, that even in the midst of a pandemic, you provided for us in a mighty good way. And now, God, we, we count it all joy to render unto your kingdom a faithful portion of that which you have blessed us with. So as we bring our tithes, our offerings, our special offerings into your kingdom, we ask that you would anoint them, that you would consecrate them, that you would multiply them, O oh God, and use them for the building of your kingdom here on earth and into thy good. And it's in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ that we pray. Let all who love the Lord say, Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to share some uh, things that are going on in the life of the community. Uh, and if I leave anything out, uh, we'll, in a minute, unmute everybody. And as we share any joys and concerns you might have, uh, feel free to lift up any additional uh, things for the uh, life of our community. Um, but before I do that, I, I just want to acknowledge um, uh, some of our gifts, on, uh, some of our guests on today. Uh, certainly, I saw uh, Adrian Lewis and Alvinia Singleton, who is really no guest. Uh, she, she's family, but we're glad that she's on uh, on today. And, and certainly, we know there uh, to be others uh, who who are really a, an extended part of our Hughes family. But, but we we just say welcome home, welcome home. Um, immediately following um, worship service today, we're not going to have our normal fellowship hour um, because we're going to have a, a love circles uh, leaders meeting immediately following worship service on today. Um, if you uh, joined a, a little late this morning, you missed a, a wonderful um, prelude uh, by uh, Nyla and Kimmy uh, Harris. So you definitely do not want to leave early uh, because uh, we also have a, a post loop from Nyla and Kimmy Harris, so, so hang on for that. Uh, this Tuesday, we will resume uh, our, our free community meal. It, it'll be uh, every Tuesday going forward, takeout only between uh, noon and 1 p.m. Uh, so if you're interested in helping to serve, see Janice Gaskins or someone who's a part of our missions ministry. Uh, on, on this Saturday, uh, we will have uh, our church council meeting, and, and that time has been bumped up to uh, 9 a.m. Uh, it, it'll be the same um, Zoom login as we use for worship. Um, on next Sunday, uh, we're actually going to have a special Bible study uh, by Minister uh, Roberta White uh, beginning at 930. And, and if you missed the one on Sunday at 930, you can catch her again. Um, she'll be doing the same Bible study on Wednesday, uh, September 23rd uh, at 8 p.m. Uh, also, uh, our food pantry uh, will take place between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. on Saturday, September 26th. Uh, those are all of the announcements I have. So we're going to uh, unmute everybody, and you might have to unmute yourself. And, and if you have any joys and concerns, if you could uh, lift up any joys or concerns uh, at this time.
Can you hear me? Yes, Brother Mosby. This is Charles Mosby. Uh, I just, just wanted to say thank you to the congregation. Carmen and I celebrated our 55th wedding anniversary the other day on 9-11. Yeah. And um, ah. I, really, I really appreciate all those who sent cards and text messages and other um, other symbols of, of love. Uh, we really appreciate it. Carmen's doing well and God is, God is